Okay, so uh, trig graphing. Um, let's take the equation, I'm going to skip a line here, y equals 3 sine open bracket to open bracket, make sure you factor your brackets, pi over 2, close bracket, close bracket, plus 1. Some people forget the extra brackets. This is necessary for the calculator. As you can see in the notes, we have the general form. And we're going to be graphing, so let's draw a graph now. I know sine kind of goes up to 1, and I know I have an amplitude of 3 out in front, so it's going to be pretty big, and I already know that center line is 1 off to the right, so however you want to do it, but take a look at the notes or be graphing it yourself, but I'm just going to kind of know what to do. Um, so I'm just going to go like that there. So I'm going to go with a scale of one, two, three, four. Usually I'd only mark one of those and just call it one and then I'd know what it means. And then I'm gonna go every, I'm gonna do a new x-axis that was lazy. I should have used a better ruler. And I'm gonna do two squares being pi over two this time. So notice my c value is over two. A little bit later, I'm going to be explaining why we want to make them over 2. So making each individual square, whichever, but I'm going to do it pi over 2 for now. So then 2 pi over 2 would just be pi. And then 3 pi over 2, counting like we practiced before, but 2 squares at a time. And then 4 pi over 2, which would just be 2 pi. Might need to extend my graph out a little bit, maybe not. So now I'm going to write the letters in big red off to the right. We're going to go D, A, C, B. So in the formula given, I'm going to circle the A value, excuse me, the D value, the D value that's last, and that's 1. And I'm going to put a horizontal dotted line at 1. Now my second letter is A, so my A is over here and that's 3. So I'm going to go up 3 from 1 and 1 plus 3 is 4 and I'm going to put a horizontal dotted line. And then I'm going to go down 3, down 1, 2, 3. My graph may not be big enough, but that's okay. My horizontal dotted line is 3 down from 1, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Now I'm going to work on my C value. So my C value in my formula is pi over 2. And it's negative, so I'm shifting to the right pi over 2. So I'm going to put a vertical dotted line to the right pi over 2 from the y-axis where we usually start. Now here's where it gets interesting. So I have to use the formula p equals 2 pi over b to find my period, the last step in DACB. Now in the formula, I'm going to circle it. I have a b value of 2. I didn't mark my C. I have a B value of 2. So I can put 2 in for B down below in red. And then I can simplify and say P equals pi. So I have a period of pi. Well, where am I going to end? Well, I know that I'm starting at my C value being pi over 2. And I need to know where I'm going to end. So I need to simply take my C value and add. I'm going to do it off to the right just for the purpose of making, being able to graph the other one on the same one. You know what? I'm going to use a new page after. So I know that I end from C plus P. Now you have to use a little bit of logic. So if C is negative, like if C shifts you to the left, you have to add that C value where you start from. And our C value is pi over 2, where we're starting from and the period we just calculated. And if I add fractions, I need a lowest common denominator. I need to multiply the top by 2, meaning that I'm going to end at 3 pi over 2. And 3 pi over 2, on the graph, I can put a vertical dotted line at 3 pi over 2. And here's where the box comes in. I'm going to outline the box in red. Four quartiles from left to right, two equal amounts on the top and the bottom. And I've graph sign before and I know how to do it. So if I have 
my signs box. I put a point at the beginning, I put a point at the end, I put a point halfway between, I put a point halfway between, and I put a point halfway between. Then I draw my sign graph, and I could draw as many into any direction as I wanted to, completely replicating that shape. To be more proper, you should be putting all your points on first, and then going in that direction, in any direction you'd like. So remember, D, A, C, B. Horizontal center line, first step. Up your amplitude and down your amplitude, second step. Shifting left or right your C value, third step. B is your last step, using the formula for the period P equals 2 pi over B, substituting your B value from the formula, finding out your period, and then finding out where you end by taking where you started at your C value, remember if you shifted left, be careful, and add your period and find out where you add. And add some fractions, get 3 pi over 2, put a vertical dotted line there, draw in your box, and then use the pattern that we've practiced so many times before. Now let's go backwards and find the equation. All right, so same sheet of notes. We're just now on the bottom, so I'm going to draw in that graph. And notice our x-axis is a little high, so that's OK. And I'm first going to draw the points. You know what? I'm going to tick my axes. One, one, two, negative one. You don't have to mark them all. But I'll put the points on the graph carefully. Excuse me, my x-axis, not 1, 2. Excuse me. So I'm going to do an x-axis of pi being 2 squares, therefore 2 pi being 4 squares, and pi over 2 in between them, and 3 pi over 2 in between them, but it gets rather messy. And then I've graphed it further to the right, so 3 pi and it looks like we're going as far as 4 pi. I should have taken a look at the notes better. And 5 pi. So a nice big wide graph here. And I'm going to put the points on very carefully looking at my notes. I have a point at pi, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice sometimes my software has shifted around a little bit. I have 2 pi at negative 2. 2 pi at negative 2. I'm going to mark the, x the y axis at all these values just to be more careful. Then I have a point at 3 pi comma 0 at the top here and then 4 pi comma negative 2 over here and then again 5 pi down at negative 4. So the graph is flat 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 steep 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 flat 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 flat, flat steep 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 and I'm going to remember to draw the box around it. And I'm going to put in my horizontal line just for fun. Because I know this is my D value. This and this is both my A value. This contributes to my C value. And using the period contributes to the B value by P equals 2 pi over b. So I'm just going to write my equation in. Now, y equals, does this look like a sine graph or a cosine graph? Well, it looks like a cosine graph because it starts at the top or the bottom. So I'm going to say a cosine open bracket b, open bracket x minus c, close bracket, close bracket, plus d. And I'm going to put in my letters as I go. So in big blue above, I'm going to underline d, which is just a y value of simply 2, negative 2. So I simply put a negative 2 below d. I'm going to start off with y equals. Now the thing about this graph, this looks like a cosine graph, but it's been flipped. So I know it's negative that negative sign that we have to be careful with. Cosine usually starts on the top. So if it starts on the bottom, it's negative. Now A, I'm going to circle in big blue, or I'm going to underline in big blue, off to the right is the amplitude, the distance from the center to the top. And that's simply two squares, or any way that you want to figure that out. So I'm going to put an A value of 2. And then I write cosine. 
And now I need my B value again from above. We had the formula. I'm going to write it off to the right, way off to the right. P equals 2 pi over B. But I don't have B. I need B. So I have to cross multiply. B equals 2 pi over P. And underlining the graph above the period, overlining in arrows, goes from 5 pi, goes from pi to 5 pi, and 5 pi minus pi is 4 pi. So back down at the bottom right, working on the B value, I'm going to substitute 4 pi, the period, 4 pi, the period, 5 pi minus pi, ending minus starting. And I can simplify that fraction. I can cross off the pi's from the top and the bottom. I'm down on the right again. And I can simplify 2 over 4 to be 1 over 2. And I'll write b equals 1 over 2. And now I can put 1 over 2 into the formula at the center. And then x minus. Well, I've shifted to the right pi. So I have a c value of pi. And it's negative because I'm going to the right. And I'm going to circle my equation in red. If you're going to take advanced physics and other courses like that, human sciences, I would spend more time learning how the translations works. But if you're just looking for the best, simplest steps to do some of these complicated subjects, especially when you're overwhelmed with so many different topics like chemistry, biology, physics, calculus, etc., sometimes it's nice to just have a little trick once in a while. The box model. So now we're going to take a look at finding the equation of a graph from two points. Okay, so max min points note. So sinusoidal function has a maximum of 317 and a minimum of 85. Find the equation. So this time I'm going to draw a graph, but I'm not going to be so strict uh, with my axes. So notice the points are all positive, so it's going to be just an L. And all I'm going to mark is the values that I care about. So I have an X value of 3. I'm just going to put 3 approximately somewhere. You know what? Yeah, because my Y values are so high, you know, it, it's hard to do this stuff. Sometimes you don't do it perfectly. So lots of the times you're just going to be using plain paper or line paper. So we should get in the habits of not using our graph paper sometimes. So let's just not care. So I have the point at 3, 17. We mentioned in the word problem in your notes. So I'm going to mark 17 away. Excuse me. I'm going to mark 17 way up there and put a point at 3, 17. And I'm going to label my point 3, 17, given information. Given information in the question. And then I have my next point. It's a minimum at 8, 5. So 8, 5, we have an x value of 8, so further over here, an x value of 8, and a y value of 5, and that's my minimum, so that's going to be my lowest point. And I can put a point on the graph, and I can label that point 8, 5. And I'm talking about a max and a min, and I should have in the last graph graphed a quick cosine function, because I know cosine goes from max to a min, so I can quickly draw a cosine. Top, top, halfway in between, excuse me, excuse me, halfway in between at the bottom, halfway in between the center, halfway in between the center, and flat, 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 steep, 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 flat, flat, flat. And I'm noticing I've only got two points. So which points are these off to the left? Well, it's this one and this one. So there must be another point with an equal distance this way, this way, and with an equal height. So let's find that point. So I know that this distance here from 3 to 8 is 5. So I just know that I'm going to go another 5 that way. Which, if I go from 8 plus 5 will be 13. Mark it anywhere you like. And then I know that it's going to have a same horizontal height as this one. So when I'm at 13, I can put a dot there. And then I can draw my box model. I'm going to do it on a dotted line this time. 
and big red off to the right to remember our box model. So I'm going to put my horizontal center line and I'm going to put my points halfway in between and halfway in between and then I'm going to go flat, 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 steep, 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 flat, 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 steep, steep, steep. And now I'm going to come up with the equation. So I already know it's a cosine because we have a cosine off to the right. Y equals cos x. Label your stuff. So I know it's cosine, so y equals, well, I already have my box model, and I know that this distance here is my amplitude, and I can get that in so many different ways. I can do 17 plus 5 is 22, divided by 2 is 11. So I know that this value is 11, and I'm going up 6 and down 6 to 5. Or I could have done 17 minus 5 is 12, and divided by 2 is 6, so that could have found it. But either way, it's 6. And on the sheet, I've done a whole bunch of silly addition and subtraction and division just to show you that so many times logic plays so much better. So back to the question. So we have our amplitude. I should have wrote the general form above it. I've got it in the notes, so I'm just going to substitute into it. Cos, open bracket. Remember, period, way off to the right, p equals 2 pi over b. Our period in big red is the full distance from 3 to 13, and 13 minus 3 is 10. So we have a period of, excuse me, I have to cross multiply b to equal 2 pi over p first. And the period we just discussed above is 10, so I can substitute 10 in for the period, and then I can simplify the fraction. So b equals pi over 5. And I can put that in my b value, as seen more cleanly in the notes. And then I have to work on my c value. Now that's the value where we start at this vertical line at the left of our box, which means that we're at 3 and we're shifting to the right, so it has to be x minus 3. Close bracket, close bracket. Then our horizontal center line which I'm going to put a gigantic D off to the right of the graph, and that is just simply positive 11. And that is the equation of this graph. Now keep in mind there's multiple equations. Take a look at a few examples below in the notes. Sine and cosine graphs, exactly the same equations with different... Well, let's go over what's the same first. So, always the same amplitude always the same period, therefore b value, always the same horizontal center line. Now that's three or so same things. Let's just memorize the differences. So as seen in your notes, the differences is the sine being positive or negative, obviously cosine or sine, because if they ask you for a cosine or sine, you're not going to forget that. So just the sine being positive or negative and the shift, because that's the only difference between them. They're the same graph, just shifted around. So for example, in big blue on the graph, if I want to start right here, I'm going to do it in blue down below. Y equals, I'm going to just do it fast. Well, that starts on the center line that goes down, so it's a negative sign. And from above, I got a 6, and then a sign, and then an open bracket, and the same pi over 5, just like we have the same amplitude, and a different shift. Well, where did that start? Well, that has a value between 3 and 8. And 8 plus 3 is 11, divided by 2 is 5.5, so it's x minus 5.5. Take a look at the notes and feel free to go back to grade 7 and calculate averages. And then we have the same horizontal center line as above and it's 11. So we'd rather just remember the only differences is the sine, pardon the pun, and the phase shift. Outside of that, sine and cosine are absolutely identical. In the notes at the bottom right hand corner, you can see a whole bunch of different positive cos shifted to the left, so positive in the brackets, negative sign, negative in the brackets, so blah, 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 each of the different types of cases. Make sure you graph them on your graphing calculator. Make sure that they don't you don't see two graphs, so you know they overlap, putting them both y1 and y2 and making sure they're the same graph. And now we're on to a couple of word problems to actually apply some of this stuff. 